Live from San Francisco, it's Channel 5's People Are Talking with Ann Fraser and Ross McGowan. Welcome to People Are Talking. And happy Martin Luther King birthday. Today is the day we observe his birthday. We do, uh, nationwide, and the Freedom Train, which has already left San Jose, it's on its way to San Francisco, and uh, what you're seeing now, or almost now, are a lot of the people that were boarding the one of two Freedom Trains that will be carrying something like 4,000 people from San Jose to uh, San Francisco today. And, a lot of festivities today. And there's going to be a march from the Townsend train station to uh, Civic Auditorium starting at 11.30 here in uh, San Francisco, 11.30 uh, this morning. Then this evening at 7, there will also be a rally at the San Jose Civic Auditorium honoring the late Dr. Martin Luther King. He was assassinated just 20 years ago on April 4th, 1968, and a planned effort that we're going to tell you a little bit about a little later on in the show to make sure that school children are aware of Dr. King and all the good works he has done. KPIX has put out a pamphlet, and we'll show it to you a little bit later. You know, this morning we're going to talk about the image of black men in our society. Not long ago, Newsweek did a whole cover story on it, and I want to read you just a little excerpt from, from that story. It says... Black men are six times as likely as white men to be murder victims. They are two and a half times as likely to be unemployed. They finish last in practically every socioeconomic measure from infant mortality to life expectancy. And some feel that black men in America seem almost an endangered species. Well, it's interesting that many people perceive black men as less intelligent, less productive, more hostile than the rest of society. And today, on the observance of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, we thought it would be interesting to confront these stereotypes. We have with us this morning, to share their insight, three very interesting men. We have Huey Newton, former Black Panther. We have Ishmael Reed, who is the professor of English literature at UC Berkeley. And we have Jawanza Kunjufu, the author of Countering the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys. Will you give all three of them a nice warm welcome this morning? <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for coming to visit us this morning on People Are Talking. Uh, we are going to definitely get into the image of black men in America, but are the three of you still reeling on the comments of Jimmy the Greek last Friday? Well, I'm not reeling. I thought the comments were uh, pretty accurate. Uh, I think that uh, blacks are superior gene line. Uh, based upon reproductive survival success, you have to reproduce in order to survive. And uh, black, blacks have been put under 400 years of slavery, given the worst food, the worst medical care, the worst housing. So that would select out the weaker gene lines. And that's why we would be uh, uh, proportionally represented in just about every area we're given an opportunity. Are you uh, glad? Are you sound uh, like you're glad he made these comments here. Now, now, if whites would like to be superior, they would uh, allow blacks to enslave them for 400 years, and their weaker gene lines would uh, die out. Uh, so I, I think that uh, Jimmy the Greek is unfairly treated by uh, the station that fired him. And uh, I think the other group that uh, probably would have a superior gene line based upon reproductive survival success are, uh, are Jewish people who've been uh, driven and uh, murdered for years. Uh, and I would like to emphasize it has nothing to do in particular with race. It has to do with selecting out a weak gene line or weak family names. Uh, weak, weak not in the, an absolute sense, but just that the people cannot stand the oppression. <clears throat> Ishmael, how do you feel? Well, well, I, 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 hold on, I'll like make right. another one. And that's that um, th there were a million black boys last year that wanted to play in the NBA. Of that million, only 400,000 will even make it to play high school ball. Of that 400,000, only 4,000 will be able to make it to play college ball. Of that 4,000, only 35 will make it to the NBA. Of that 35, only seven start. And the average life in the NBA is four years. 
So the real problem is we have a million brothers looking for seven full-time jobs the last four years. And yet last year we had 100,000 jobs available to be a computer programmer, engineer, or doctor, and only 1,000 brothers qualified. So our appeal to black males is to realize the odds. That that you do most will be that that you do best. I mean, we were the first doctor, not Hippocrates, in Hopetep. So we have the ability either in math or science or music and sports. But that that you do most will be that that you do best. If you play basketball from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock, you'll be a very good basketball player. If you went home and went to the library, you'd be a very good scholar. We need more black male role models that will encourage our youth in math and science. Ishmael, how are you reacting to the... Yeah, I was uh, offended degrees? by the remarks, but... Uh, you were what? Offended? I was offended by the remarks, but I hear those kind of remarks all day, every day. And I think that... Uh, so people, he said what you think a lot of folks are they thinking it. anyhow, they it before, but they're not saying it. Before I came over here, uh, I was uh, tuned into another channel, fortunately. That's, that's okay, Ishmael. And, uh, <laughs> I think the uh, interviewer was trying to uh, congratulate Arthur Mitchell of the uh, Harlem uh, Dance uh, Group. And he tried to congratulate him by saying that, well, these people are not into superfly uh, bebop. Uh, they're into things that are more, uh, forms that are more elegant and sophisticated. I can't think of any uh, music form that's more sophisticated and elegant than bebop. So I took that as a slur against uh, Afro-American music. So I think what happens is that uh, we run the risk of singling out people like Nick the Greek and. Uh, Al Campane, is that the way you pronounce yeah, the name? Al Campane. Yeah, who have uh, working class uh, styles, and we let these elitists, people in culture and education, uh, get away. You understand what I mean? So it seems to be a double standard. People who have a working class background, like those two guys, get blasted. But people in the industry I work in, in the university and uh, uh, and culture get away. They make remarks like that all the time. So in other words, it's, it's kind of a good thing that it came out. It kind of hit people in the face, made them realize that they have this deep programming that's gone on. Yeah, but so. see, the programming continues. I mean, you know. I, I, can't, I can't see why any people would be insulted by uh, someone saying they're superior. Uh, as I read the article... Yeah, but uh, the Reverend uh, Jesse uh, Jackson, uh, Huey, has uh, said uh, he should have been fired by CBS. Wait, wait, Dr. Wait, Harry wait, Edwards... Wait, wait, uh, Huey, wait, hold wait, on. Wait, wait, I'm talking on about to, what Huey Newton but, says right now. Doctor, uh, uh, Jimmy the Greek also said if blacks are given the opportunity in management in other areas, they will probably be superior there, too. And uh, so I, I, I can't see where anyone would find fault with him other than the majority group who, who are afraid of blacks because of our superiority. Uh, you said okay. Oh, yeah, I said okay because it's true. It's easy for us to lash out at this person, but he meant that. You know, that was his programming, it wasn't? Right, he meant exactly what he said. That was very important to him. So we have to look at that and realize that this is how people are thinking. How do we change people's thinking? I don't want to change it. In other words, if, if you put blacks under the most vicious, the most savage oppression uh, through, uh, throughout the, uh, the start of the enslaving period, uh, what gene line would be left other than a very strong gene line? Uh, I think it's ridiculous to think that, uh, uh, in a biological sense, that a weak gene lines would not be wiped out after giving the worst food, the worst medical care, and so forth. I think what, you, what people really want to do is read into Jimmy the Greek's statement to say that, well, blacks are only good at athletics and blacks can't be good at quarterbacks or at management. But he did not say that. I think, I think your program to read into it black inferiority, because that's what you're used to seeing. And I don't know what his intentions were either, even. So how do we reprogram that so we don't think that blacks are inferior? Well, you just have to stop being racist by uh, first encountering your racism and uh, seeing first that you should, maybe you should be a little afraid of uh, of a, uh, a people that you've uh, attempted to commit genocide against, uh, not only then but now. Juwanza, is it the fault of the media? Well, th there's no question that there's a direct relationship between images and self-esteem. Uh, and he goes all the way back to Tarzan, to Superman, to Rambo, to Batman, to even painting an image of Jesus Christ as white. I mean, you can't separate racism from anything. So it's, no, it's, not, it's not unlikely then that you have Pope Julius commissioning Michelangelo in 1505 to paint Jesus Christ white. Images control self-esteem. Abraham Lincoln found out very early when you have 300 slaves on a plantation and one master, it takes a lot of work. Why don't you let them go? But don't teach them who they are. Control their history. Control their images. Then you won't have to watch them. Whoever controls the mind will also control the body. Let's talk about the image of the black man in America when we return. Stay tuned.
trying to find the card here of um, an article I had read in Newsweek magazine by Sylvester Monroe, a reporter for Newsweek. Went back to the projects in, in Chicago to see where he had been reared and all. And he said, as he sees it, the image of a black man in America is like when he gets on an elevator, a woman, she grabs her purse a little tighter to herself, fear that this black man's going to steal it. He's walking down a deserted street with a black friend, and a white couple is walking toward them, and they, they cross the street for fear of these black men. Is that the image of black men in America as you see it? Well, one of the things that I'm concerned with in one of the books that I've written, Countering the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys, is what happens early on. And one of our concerns is that we have studies that document that black boys may be the best students in the country up until fourth grade. So the question is, what happens to black boys in the intermediate and upper grades to begin to create the kind of image that you're talking about when they become 18 years and older? I sincerely believe that only men can make boys men. Now, don't misquote me. I did not say that a single female parent could not rear or educate her child. But she need not do that by herself. Because I understand we're on television, Thomas, I'm going to make the point very clear. Where are black boys going to see black men? If you look at the home, 38% 38 of all black children live in a single-run household. In terms of uh, school, 83% of our elementary school teachers are women. 95% of our teacher aides are women. Uh, when you look at on television, you'd be hard-pressed to name five positive black men on television outside the news, especially if I excluded Bill Cosby. And then, unfortunately, many young people, men, do, don't go to church. So the last place is the streets, and that's the problem. The streets do a very poor job making black men. So what about the real problem is black boys have a difficult time seeing strong black male role models, which is why these kind of shows are very important. What about Eddie Murphy? As a positive male role model? Yes. I have concerns about that. <laughs> I, 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 re, I respect his ability to use his talent, uh, but there are other ways. I mean, images are very important. And even though in even his last movie, where he, was, he even used a plug about Bill Cosby said, you know, can you make uh, things funny without using four-letter words and so forth and so on. It, it's, it's as if Eddie Murphy said he understood it, but he went right back to using four-letter words throughout his entire show. Uh, so we men, have to clean that up. How about any of the black men in the audience this morning? Have you ever had experiences where when you take off the coat and tie, you're treated differently? Yes, Carlton? Howard? I mean, I'm sorry, Emmett. Or, uh, uh, definitely, uh, I'm, I'm involved in, in, in politics, and when I'm, as I'm dressed now, I'm treated a lot differently than when I have my tie on. Um, How are you treated differently? Well, take, like, take, take for instance, uh, if you're walking, in a, walking in, down the street, and, you, and I grew up in a white environment most of my life. Um, if I'm by myself and, I, and I'm walking around white people, they're going to look at me strangely as if I've done something, whether I've done it or not. But I wanted to ask questions I want the, uh, the gentleman to address as far as the media and government how they downgrade our leadership and also our government, how they, sp how they spend more money uh, putting our brothers and sisters in jail and, and as far as not taking care of the educational part. I think that's the, a, a root of our problem as far as black America. Education. I'd like to reinforce that. Uh, America spends $2,300 on Hit Start to reinforce your point. They spend twenty to $38,000 on prison. So I believe we need to raise the right questions. How long do you stay in Hit Start? Year? two years of the most. How long do you stay in prison the rest of your life? Question number one. Question number two, which one works? A longitudinal study documents that Head Start works. But in terms of prison, 85% of the inmates to get released go right back in. So as Jesse Jackson says, we have two choices, middle class white America. You can either send me to Penn State or to State Penn. Carlton. I, 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 don't, ex I, don't, I don't expect, uh, I don't expect uh, uh, institutions in America to project positive male, uh, uh, Im uh, black male images. Uh, black male images are created through revolution, uh, through fighting to change the kind of oppress oppressive conditions that have existed here and that exist. And the positive images that we all can be very proud of are movers such as Dr. Martin Luther King, um, uh, and historically not the private Turner, Denmark Vesey, uh, what about the Black X. Panthers, Hugh? Uh, the Black Panther Party, uh, notwithstanding. Wasn't that a great? <laughs> wasn't that a great boost well, to the black I, men in this country? Well, uh, we think so, and uh, of course uh, we were wiped out systematically. Uh, there were about uh, uh, a million uh, uh, pages of uh, of, uh, of uh, information compiled upon me alone. I don't know how many millions of illegal. 
uh, I don't know how many uh, illegal break-ins, but I know I suffered uh, at least 20 or 30 illegal break-ins. There were uh, FBI documents that falsified uh, bank records uh, sent around, and the bank records were then sent around to our uh, supporters. Uh, there were character assassinations. Everything you scared that, people, uh, Huey. The uh, Black Panthers anytime, scared people. Anytime the black man attempts to change the slave image, he will scare white people. So uh, the right. Black Panther Party, uh, I thank you. Uh, when you said that we scared people, that means that we were creating a, a positive black image for ourselves. Carlton, you were an original Panther, also correct. I was uh, one of the original members of Huey's defense team when he was first charged with the murder of Officer Fry and uh, the assault on Officer Haynes. I have many comments to make, and I'm not going to be able to make them all. Yes, but I would like to make uh, them in order of importance. We are celebrating Martin Luther King's birthday today. I think that we should be, in, at some point, uh, considering making Huey P. Newton's birthday a national holiday. Oh, you when I first. <laughs> When I first came to the Bay Area from Chicago, I was appalled at the way the police were oppressing black people in the ghetto. And the only man who had the guts to stand up was Huey P. Newton, along with uh, his uh, associate Bobby Seale. I was very proud of his actions. I thought that Martin Luther King taught us how to pray and how to arouse the conscience of our oppressor. And I thought that Huey P. Newton taught us how to stand up to our oppressor. And for that, I think he should be accorded a national holiday. Thank you, Carlton. Yes. You did a nice Thank job you. with that. Bravada. Hi. I grew up in San Francisco in the Hunters Point Naval Projects, and I could remember being about six or seven, and we had a, an area for the Black Panthers up in Hunters Point, and I felt so protected that they were there. I felt that I could go outside, and everything was beauty. The people, the black people were together in Hunters Point, and when we had that big riot on 3rd Street, everybody began stealing from each other. Not at that point, but it's just like we lost our togetherness. We lost it. Now that you look back over the entire Black Panther movement, are, are you buoyed by it? I mean, was it a real positive experience? Uh, Do you I think, think it that, worked? I, I think that we, uh, we accomplished some of the uh, goals that we set out for. Of course, that uh, blacks are not free in the United States uh, uh, to this very day, so we have not accomplished freedom. Uh, but there, I hope that we laid down a uh, history uh, that we uh, contributed to the continuing struggle for uh, freedom. Let's take a commercial break. We'll be back. Ishmael Reed, you were unhappy with the film The Color Purple and the way it portrayed black men. Why? Well, uh, in my new book, Writing is Fighting, uh, plug, plug, I uh, <laughs> That's okay. outlined some of my reservations about the film. I thought it was a contradiction for um, uh, the writer and the industry behind the writer. This was a collective decision. It wasn't her decision alone. They had a meeting, these uh, feminists. I thought it was a contradiction for them to take a film about uh, black male chauvinism to the biggest male chauvinist in Hollywood. You wouldn't take a film about the Martin Luther King to Bull Connor and ask him to do it, okay? For people to say racism and sexism are the same. I couldn't imagine that happening. So uh, this, this movie was taken to uh, Steven Spielberg, who's been criticized by Asian American organizations, Irish American organizations, for his uh, depiction of Irish and uh, Asians in some films. And I understand a new film, which my uh, wife and daughter saw yesterday, is anti-Japanese. So uh, they took this product to him, and uh, the goal apparently was to make money. Do you understand? Uh, now we have a color. So it distorted Alice's image from her book. Last up to her, I mean, she was a consultant on the <laughs> film. She was on on the studio working on the film until the uh, commencement of what photography. What did you like? What What were the characters? I mean, it was one story of no, a, I, I, a not I, very I, nice well, man. I mean, but. she has a right to uh, write what she wants to, and Hollywood has a right to to. Uh, I mean, this is Martin Luther King Day. We're for freedom. We're not. I'm not for censorship. They have a right to do what they wanted. I'm just pointing out the contradictions in the feminist ideology. Now we have another color purple clone coming up where um, uh, they're going to do a lot of these because they made a lot of money, made over $100 million. So, and I understand from Fortune 500 that Steven Spielberg is almost a, uh, a billionaire. So, uh, you know, we're like a natural resource. That's one thing black males are. They take our stuff and make a lot of money out of it. Yeah, I should, we should hire ourselves <laughs> up like the coal industry or something. But anyway, uh, 
There's a new film coming out, which is going to be done by the producers of Rocky. Same thing, a feminist took a uh, product about black male chauvinism and took it to a man who uh, produced a misogynistic movie, Rocky. And the, the movie Rocky uh, made millions of dollars uh, exploiting the public's uh, fear of uh, black males. You know, you had the scene where Mr. T uh, hit on the man's wife, and that kind of thrilled everybody when he got knocked out or beaten or was, uh, was, uh, conquered by Rocky. So uh, I think one thing about black sexism is it's, it's big business. And that may be the reason that uh, it'll be hard to eradicate it. So, in other words, delicious. you're saying that they're making a big business on the misery of black men. Oh yeah, I mean, rather than uh, uplifting them. Sure. What and, 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 the fun, and, the, and the, the ironic thing is, these people are liberals. You know, uh, the people who participated in this, this, this wasn't given us to the, by the right wing. It was given us to by uh, liberals. Liberals in Hollywood were the ones who uh, produced this, and they're producing. Delicious. The you have a comment. Yes, I think that uh, we'll all agree that education will be the key to uh, remedying many of the problems that we have in the country today with respect to the images of black male. I'd be interested to hear from some of the Caucasian members of the audiences how they could, uh, uh, how as citizens and taxpayers, we could do something to increase the number of uh, blacks in uh, the graduate schools. I've been teaching in law schools for 12 years, and uh, the highest point of enrollment was uh, during the 68 uh, to 71 period after the Black Panther Party was organized. As you know, there were many more job openings and there were more uh, educational opportunities, but now enrollments are now down and we want to see how can we increase that. Well, we're not getting Mer any Mer comments from our we are white here. audience Hang on, right here. Morning. We've got a comment about education, Merle. Um, I feel like you're right, and I feel like it's a, a very, um, lacking part of our society that we don't address the needs of the black student. But I think it needs to start younger than that. I think it needs to start in the grammar schools. And I'd like to know how we can change this to make this happen. What do we need to do? I don't feel that education addresses the needs of the black student. I totally agree. One of our problems before even the issue of prison, uh, black children are 17% of all children in this country, but they're 41% of all the special ed children, the educable mentally retarded, the learning disabled children, the behavior disorder children. 17 doesn't equal 41. And if labeled special ed for, in terms of black children, 85% of the time it's going to be a black boy. See, the real challenge is the female teachers. They have designed a classroom for female students. The student with the least chance of being placed in special ed is the white female, then the black female, then the white male, and then the black male. So white boys also have similar problems with this female-run classroom. In other words, if you know that boys have a higher energy level, a lot more movement in the classroom. If you know that boys are more advanced gross motor, then a lot more gross motor activities. If you understand that boys um, uh, have a higher ego or some other kinds of issues, we need to allow for that more in our classroom. And many times we aren't doing that. And we need to pay teachers so that black men and white men would like to become educators at early grades. Vera. Correct. Correct. Well, <clears throat> I was an affirmative action officer at a major company for four years, and while I was there, one of the programs that we started was having some of our black engineers and other female engineers and different representatives of minorities go into the high schools with us and make presentations about the fields that they were in and what it would take to do that as far as an engineer or a technician, et cetera. I think that was a real start, it, and I had some mixed feelings about it. I never liked it to look staged. But it was, I think, real effective in getting the students to think about it. And my only other comment would be that to have that same program in elementary schools. <coughs> yeah. The role model mentor program is a very good program, <coughs> and we need to have more of that. How do you feel about, jo is it Joseph Clark? I'm not sure I have his name right. I hope so. The, the, the principal I, who no, is... No, Joseph Clark. Joseph, Joseph Clark, Clark, who's hot, who's trying to make the schools work, who's saying, if you don't, you know, if you don't put your nose to the grindstone, you're out, and he's running into all kinds of trouble. He brought me into his school to speak, and, and my concern about Joe Clark is that anytime you have a school where there's a high disciplinary problem, high drug problem, you can't teach when schools are not safe. He was a major contribution in making the school safe. But, but good principals are also strong instructional leaders. Joe Clark is not a very strong instructional leader. He made the school safe. Now we need to have another kind of administrator in there for instructional leadership. In other words, you need to have someone else who will make the school safe. That does not have to come out of the principal's office. We've got to so go I respect away from them. We need to have somebody else for instruction. We'll be back in uh -huh. just a moment. Stay tuned. Seems to me. Talking about the image of black men in America, and mostly we've heard black 
people talking about and somewhat how they perceive themselves. And uh, the white members of our audience, uh, the, the other colors, are not saying much about image. I mean, is there a reason to fear in your minds a black man walking down the street in exercise clothes? Does anybody feel that they have to hold their purse closer or maybe they gonna, can't leave the car unlocked? Angelo. Well, I don't know about my purse, but uh, I don't want to cheat you either because I'm Puerto Rican, so I'm part of the Rainbow Coalition here. You know, uh, I'm from New York, uh, uh, home of uh, Howard Beach. And one of the problems is, uh, although we have to talk about long-term problems and structural problems in the society and how, you know, images are projected, what do you do in the short term? And that is the fact that, that you have that fear. You have, you know, uh, people that can, can say, you know, more blacks and Puerto Ricans and Latinos are in prison than, you know, white people are, in, per, per, you know, proportionately, that there's more crime in, you know, black areas. And you have this image, you know, that is based on some realities in the sense of the immediate thing that doesn't deal with the long-term thing. How do you deal in the short term with those kinds of issues? How do you address that in terms of, you know, uh, let's so say... If you see a black man on the street and he's not in coat and tie, maybe even if he is, you have some fear. Well, I think uh, people have fear. People have fear of me, you know, as a Puerto Rican uh, also. So uh, there's a lot of fear around. But again, the question is, how do you, like in New York City, the city is very, very uh, polarized now, for example. How do you deal with those things, as I said, in the short run? Uh, well, I think we can answer that question very quickly by simply asking ourselves, why were black people brought to this country? We were brought here to work. Does that reason exist today? America has a problem. What do they do with the people they no longer need? But remember how you phrase the question determines the answer. The Negro question is, what are they going to do for us? The African question is, what are we going to do for ourselves? In other words, <laughs> and, and, and very quickly, what I'm trying to get at is that there are good intentioned parents to tell their children to get a good education, to get a good job. I don't lie to my two sons, 15 and 10. I tell them to get a, get, to get a good education, to be like their father, to be the boss, to run their own corporations. In America, you can have a BA, MA, and I have a PhD, and you can still be out of work. In other words, well-trained but poorly educated. So programs like Minister Farrakhan's self-help programs, see, it's a contradiction for America to condemn a Louis Farrakhan, to condemn the Black Panthers who are reinforcing self-help kind of activities. They need to create income and jobs in the black community. We earn $208 billion, but we spend 93% of our money somewhere else. Where you spend your money is where you spend your job. Carl. I wanted to make the point in the concurrence with what the gentleman just said, and that is that uh, education, frankly, is overrated in terms of what it will do for uh, black, uh, blacks in America. Uh, it's a, merely a tool, and the bottom line are the economics involved. As Louis Farrakhan pointed out, why can't we at least make our own toilet paper, our own soap, and our own toothpaste, and not be dependent upon the dominant culture for our basic needs? It was also pointed out to me that uh, I should respond to how it make, made me feel, for example, when I was stopped by an Albany police officer walking along the street at 4 o'clock in the morning in my jog suit and tennis shoes going home because he didn't know me. First thing he did, he approached me and asked me for my ID. Well, I don't carry ID in my jog suit. When I gave him my name, uh, I gave him my nom de plume, because I'm a poet, and my nom de plume is Alan Philip Decadro. When he couldn't come up with anything on the computer, he was very incensed. Now, he got angry at me simply because he couldn't find anything on the computer, which should have indicated that I wasn't in any trouble or hadn't been in any, any trouble. But the fact of the matter is I was very incensed about this incident, and I think that uh, the fact that a black man not in a shirt and tie is oppressed more than other people is one of the indicia of racism in this country. Okay, we'll be back in a moment. Carolyn, you had a question. I just wonder why sometimes, um, often, black men choose white women over black women. I don't understand that. Well, I think that that's very uh, easily answered by the fact that we still live in a world where we base images or beauty of Europeans. In other words, if America defines beauty as light skin, long hair and blue eyes, haven't they told you what ugly is? There are still people, even in this audience, using terms like good hair. If you know what good hair is, you've got to know what bad hair is. If you know what pretty eyes are, you have to know what ugly eyes are. That's dialectic. Once you know what it is, you automatically know what's not. But you know what's amazing about racism? When I was in Florida, I found Europeans trying their best to run down to Florida to get a suntan to look like us. And then I found us running home with cream trying to look like them. Do you know how many black women, even in this audience, cannot swim? 
afraid they are gonna go back? Go back to where? Where are you afraid of going back to? Linda. I just wanted to address what was said earlier about um, black men walking down the street in the middle of the night. Anyone walking down the street in the middle of the night will be stopped by a police officer because that's not a common time to be out. And if someone was walking down the street in your neighborhood at 3 in the morning, wouldn't you wonder, no matter what color they were, what they were doing there? Exactly. Ooh, yeah, Starla. One thing I was going to address in there is that I don't think it because you were colored, and if you're saying that the uh, officer had an attitude at all, it might have been any question that you were giving, false ID, was there any other reason? Not just because of your color, but for his they, own they safety. Just, they, just, uh, they just found out that the Transit Authority in uh, New York was singling out Hispanic and black uh, men for arrest when they were not guilty of crimes. It's a big case in uh, New York right now. That happens all the time. Starla. That uh, black, do you, want, do you want me to finish? That uh, there seems to be tension between black men and white men in this country. I once proposed that uh, the black men and white men ought to have a conference like the women did down in Houston. Maybe they can work it out because uh, I know every time I go out of the house, I want to have some kind of hassle with somebody, you know. Uh, I, I'll give you a concrete example, an anecdote, okay, instead of theory, <laughs> an anecdote, something that happened to me. I've been trading at this uh, coffee place on uh, Telegraph Avenue in uh, Berkeley for about 15 years. Uh, people have been very courteous to me. I went in there with another black person, a black man, and they, I thought they were going to call a riot squad or something, you know what I mean? Because two black men constitute a mob, I guess. That goes back to slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So I think, I think there's some, some, some hostility and conflict between uh, black men and men of other backgrounds in this country. And I think it ought to be worked out in a peaceful manner so that we can avoid some of these conflicts. And I think getting back to education, uh, you mentioned uh, Joe Clark and his methods and everything. I think something's wrong with this curricula, too. Uh, we have uh, people who uh, do ignorant things uh, because they've uh, not been acquainted through the educational system with other cultures. Now, if I were Jimmy the Greek, I would sue my high school, I would sue every university I went to for not acquainting me with Afro-American people in this country. Now, we have a case down here in uh, uh, Stanford where the Asian, uh, Hispanic, and Afro-American students are just trying to get Stanford to make one, eth one ethnic course a required course, okay? Just one, not changing the curricula, not making the curricula in the multicultural curricula so we can learn about Hispanics and other people in this country, but just one, and the resistance is coming from uh, the professors there. And I'm reminded of the professors in Nazi Germany who uh, knew about Schubert and Bach and Beethoven, yet they were the ones who led uh, to the Holocaust, who encouraged the Holocaust, and used to end their lectures with Heil Hitler. Starla. Um, what I wanted to say is that I don't agree with the lady saying that because you're... Um, not well because you're out after four o'clock in the morning i live in the hate people are up jogging all the time you don't see anybody being stopped at five o'clock in the morning four o'clock in the morning in the hate ashbury but that's because it's a predominantly white neighborhood and that's what? the way that's the way i see it i I'm don't think if it was a you know it doesn't make any difference when it's a predominantly white neighborhood and white people are jogging but if a brother was out there they would be watched and they would be um looked at I hate to disagree with you, but I was stopped this morning at 5.30 walking my dog by a policeman who just wanted to know why I was out at that hour. I'll tell you what, the wh white women are the safest group in this country. They, I mean, you know, uh, just statistically, if you want to get back to theory, if you're a white woman, your uh, chances of being murdered is 1 in 300-something. If you're a white man, it's a 1 in 200-something. If you're a black woman, it's 1 in 181. If you are a black man, it's 1 in 25, okay? So all we hear about in the media is uh, protecting American European women. Do you understand I me? Mean, when they're the safest people, the safest group in this country. And I see the police and all these other knight errants or whatever, these vassals and warriors, protect their whole energy is directed towards uh, uh, protecting the safest group in this country. So I think we get in this hysteria about race because, partially because of the media. And I don't want to bring that because I'm on television, yeah, I, I'm on your show. But well, I think that's okay. the media okay, you can say that. Think, thing is to get I some think things said, and I don't know what we're getting said. People get 95% the of their information from television nowadays, okay? Brian Gumbel said this is the most important way of informing people and educating people in the country. And I think the media has become more responsible. Every time I look at that 6 o'clock news, I cringe. I say, oh, Lord, what, what do we do now? You know what I mean? We what, have black what, men as muggers black, and For the rapists. black women in this audience, hey, what well, role I, I, do you like play in the, in the said, image of black men? You said you were stopped. Uh, of you course, know what? We're not of course we're, we weren't talking about white people are never arrested, white people are never right. stopped right. going down. See, that's an absolute right. statement. You have white people in jail. We mean as the, as the uh, statistical average that blacks are more often stopped according to our number that we represent in society, which is only about 11%. Right. You know what? And I don't I think, think anybody's going to disagree with 
to wait. I agree to with look you completely. Okay. Well, well, how do we to change that? Let me give you an example. I'm all we're given the way you change it is through revolution. The way you change it is changing the entire institutionalized okay, racism. Okay, we're not going to change the whole system this no, morning. No, give no, us no, some okay, ideas what we're going to do to help. This morning we're not going to do anything but procrastinate. But what I'm trying to say is we have to start movements like the uh, civil rights movement, uh, continue it like the Black Panther Party, continue it like the Republic of New Africa, continue movements like the Nation of Islam, because it needs all of those uh, uh, groups, all of those movements, just to start to make a dent in the kind of twisted mentality white people have in this country. Why aren't they being from, started from the then? upper class to the middle class, because they Rita all has a comment here by again. the situation of black oppression, one way or Rita. another, even okay. when they don't want to. You know how we can start today? Well, no, let's no, let our okay. audience have some comment. Well, you have more time than I have. You just oh, in the audience. You have, you have more time. Why don't you come up? You have more time than I have, and you just in the audience. That's probably true. Yeah, my right, feeling right. is that my feeling is that as a black woman and a sure, mother, hostile. it is my responsibility, true. as what I see myself as the first teacher of a nation. I consider myself to be a part of the black nation. And as a, my responsibility as a mother is to teach my son the reality and the truth of the world as it exists. Not only my son, but any child that comes into my environment. If I see a kid walking down the street and it's raining and he's got his coat on his shoulder, sweetheart, put your coat on right. your back. Okay, if I see a child disrespecting an adult, he doesn't have to be my child, but I will correct him. And that is our responsibility as black women and women as a whole. We are the first teachers of our children who become our nation. Joey, there are white men in the audience, and there are black men in the audience, and we haven't heard anything from the white men. How do you guys feel about the black man? Ross, how do you feel about it? What is your I, point I, of view I would it? say <laughs> that I have met uh, uh, some white, uh, white men that I haven't cared for and some black men that I haven't cared for. I mean, I really... I was telling somebody a story before I went on the air, and it was back in 1968, and I was living down in Campbell, California, and the fellow below us... Um, was carrying, holding his new little baby. And I looked over the railing and I said, congratulations, I mean, you're a, you're a dad now. And he said, yeah. He said, the first thing I'm gonna teach this child is the difference between black and white. And I walked inside and I said to my wife, I said, whoa. I mean, that scared me. That really upset me as a white man, that another white man would say, he's gonna teach him the difference between, that's the whole problem we got in this country. There's I'll no I'll difference. I'll, I'll be brief, I promise. Carlton, you can't be you brief. You can't be. I promise I will. No, I wanted to make the comment that uh, Ann mentioned she was stopped at 5 a.m. I agree with the brother who said the police officer was trying to protect her, probably. I didn't finish my story. The police officer who stopped me when he couldn't get a readout on the computer told me that I was going to stand there until something came up or I gave him a different name. I explained to him that uh, my nom de plume had been in existence for over 20 years. I turned my back on him and walked away as he pulled his revolver. And his brother officer said to him, uh, don't shoot him, it's not worth it. And I did not turn around, so it could have gone either way. Uh, he wasn't trying to protect me, but he was trying to protect Ann. I think, I, think uh, I think enlightened white males like yourself should go back and try to educate some of the other guys. Um, okay, no, let, 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 let me finish, because uh, you know, I'm not singling you out uh, as being part of the problem. Your ancestors are probably in Europe paying as much dues as some of the slaves. That's possible, okay, because there were white ethnics who came here as slaves, as indentured servants, and who were restricted in their activity just as blacks were. But I think that when you look at the problems in this country, the institutions, for example, uh, it's just, just coincidentally maybe white men in charge of those institutions. White men are like, less likely to give jobs to minorities and women, okay? White men are the ones who are committing incest, okay? That's what, one thing I objected to the color purple because they had these black men doing all these kinds of things when the incidence is very low in an Afro-American community of black men committing incest. If you want to talk about rapists, you have to talk about white males again, you know? So I, white men need to be educated, and white men like you ought to go back and try to educate them. Thank you. We'll be back after this. We've got about a minute and a half, Rochelle. Okay, I'd like to address this question to Huey Newton and Mr. Carlton. I don't see how you can compare his way to Dr. Martin Luther King way. He went, he took his actions wrong. He didn't go about it the right way. 
okay? A holiday for this man? That's funny, okay? Because he's wrong about his ways. All right, we got it. We got 45 seconds. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Carlton. Carlton, we know. <laughs> all right. Uh, first of all, first of all, uh, Dr. King was a very great man, and his greatness was rooted in prayer. And Huey Newton was a great man. His greatness was rooted in what Dr. King was praying for, manhood. Okay, Stacy. Um, well, I see some black men as it's their attitude. Like, you have the Black Panthers, and you're in your group, and you feel, you feel strong. But then we have, you're like separating yourself still. And then we're going to get a group, and then you're going to get another group, and that's what separates us. We, we don't and have to separate ourselves when we're already separated. Uh, but uh, let, let me say this about Dr. Martin Luther King. Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King was put out of the NAACP uh, because he was too radical. And uh, before that, uh, do, uh, Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, who started the NAACP, was put out because uh, he was a, a communist. And he later then went to, uh, back to Africa and died in Ghana. I think that uh, I respect Dr. Martin Luther King in all of the areas. The NAACP, for instance, is, is a legal area. Uh, the Southern Leadership uh, Council was an action area. I think that if, I think the our problem is so large in, until it takes more than Dr. Martin Luther King, it takes more than Malcolm X, it takes more than Huey Newton to solve this problem. So I would like and to know how this young lady would contribute today uh, in her Dr. actions. Or in her teachings we thank everybody for being with us. Anne and I shall return after this. Stay tuned.